When I'm not ordering shampoo in bulk off of Amazon, starting to use it without reading the label, and then realizing it was conditioner all along, thus I have not shampooed my hair in over eight months, I like to answer questions on YouTube, so let's get to it. Were those octaves you dropped in the opening demo? Didn't see those mentioned later. Great ideas. So this is from the lesson I posted last week about kind of being able to like riff in between chords and stuff, which I'll link to if you haven't seen that. But yeah, uh, one of the ideas I didn't really talk too much was about octaves, and I think that's like a like really great thing that you can very easily incorporate into your guitar playing. So basically an octave, if we have like a G note, third fret on the E string, just go down two strings, down two frets, and that'll give you an octave. And the great thing about that is your fingers will kind of naturally mute the A string in between. So it's really just like a super powerful note doubled, all right? So instead of G power chord, you have G octave. Now the cool thing about using them to fill space between chords, let's do a major one and a minor one. Let's do like a chord progression where it's like G minor to F major. Okay, I'm also rocking this uh, awesome Epiphone Master Belt, which I'll probably do a demo on soon. But if we do a G minor, a cool way to really just very easily riff on octaves is to take the root note, go two frets higher, and then go one fret higher. Now you can do this over any minor chord, pretty much, because that minor third is gonna be the same for any minor chord, and leading into that whole step away, even though not every minor chord has a whole step away from it in the key, it always sounds pretty good. So if you're just kind of jamming on a G minor, that's just kind of way to kind of fill something and kind of give it some action instead of just hanging on a G minor, which sometimes you do just want to hang on a minor chord anyway. But if you want to do something a little flashier, just minor chords, G minor to A minor. Kind of fill in between them. And then you kind of have some stuff that you can always use. Now, the major one is the exact same thing. Except you just go two whole steps in a row, just like through the major scale, it's whole, whole, half. So you have two full octaves. So if we're doing like an F major thing, we can go to the third fret and the fifth fret uh, and fill in between those with octaves. And I think that usually sounds good, specifically in just an acoustic guitar setting where you're playing with maybe just one singer or you're just playing yourself. Because it really kind of fills out the sound and has kind of like a powerful sound to it. Half. that you can really very easily add a little bit of action. Again, it's not like a solo or anything, just kind of like to take up some of the spaces in between chords instead of just doing the same thing. Always just kind of remember that pattern that no matter where your root note is on the E or the A string, you can always rock an octave out, whether it's minor, root note, maybe two frets higher and then the minor third, or if it's major, a step higher and another step higher. So two frets, then four frets. Actually, a lot of rookies play arpeggio sweeps. A real pianist will instantly recognize that you are a rookie if the first or only thing you do is an arpeggio sweep. It takes a real special type of douchebag <laughs> to look at a piano player doing an arpeggio sweep and instantly be like, rookie. <laughs> Sean, when you get the chance, please answer my question. What you and Ian are playing at the beginning of this video is super nice. Is it an original or just a jam of some kind? I especially like how Ian doesn't overplay his lead part. Simple, nice selection of notes that fit perfectly with the rhythm chords you're playing. Thank you. Yeah, so this is off the live feed that uh, Ian and I started off the other day. And it is cool because I feel like me and Ian have a real chemistry in playing because we're, we're totally kind of like opposites as players in a lot of way. He is an excellent, excellent lead player. Tasty stuff, doesn't overplay, just like you said. And uh, to your question is, we never have anything planned. It's always like, I'll just tell him the key or he'll tell me the key and he'll be like, we're gonna do this in D. Usually that means I'm just gonna start playing something D major seven to like a, you know, a six minor 11 chord to the four chord. And he always just kind of like locks in. And a lot of it is just kind of tips we've taught in like other videos and stuff. And a lot of people have been asking about this. So we actually, filmed a course that is probably gonna be live in a few days 
just kind of going over and just playing with another musician. Because I specifically remember how daunting it was to just even get the nerve to play with another musician because, no, you know, you want to... I thought maybe I had to find somebody that would like exactly like my skill level at the time or whatever. But I think that was just kind of, you know, a, a stupid way to think about it. But also a totally understandable thing to do because it's like, okay, you know, the, the confidence of being able to jam with somebody else isn't always there. So we made a whole class about it. It's coming out soon. Uh, I'll make a video kind of like, you know, with some stuff that we're going to talk about and kind of give you a rundown of it soon. But definitely stay on the lookout for that because I think we did a good job in really breaking down a very easy way to come about it. And hopefully it's very empowering to all of you to just get out and just like play with other musicians because it can be like a lot of fun and it's not hard to do. Your camera girl is not impressed, but I would really like to see a video on those homemade handcrafted sound panel thingies. So this is when I did the studio tour last week and I kind of showed off some of the sound panels that I had made, which for my very limited arts and craft skills are probably one of the finer things that I've actually done. Now a lot of people have asked me to do a video on these on how to do them, but honestly I would clearly just be ripping off the video on YouTube that I watched of the guy who taught me how to do it. So I'm gonna link you to the video that taught me how to do it. Check that out. And if you still wanna see me just struggle my way through an arts and crafts project, definitely hit me up and maybe I'll make my own. But I definitely wanna give credit to this guy because he does like an amazing job. So I'll link you below if you're interested in making like your own sound panels because they make an enormous difference. And it's not so much of like a sound isolating thing with these particular panels. It has like rock wool is the, the material that's in, in the middle of it. It's more to uh, treat your room to make it sound good as compared to soundproof. I think that's kind of like a common misconception that you have, which is why sometimes like if the, like the lawn service is here, you can still hear it in, in this room if it's super loud because this room isn't soundproof, but it sounds very good. And even with this new room, it sounds so much better than, than my old place just because of like the dimensions and stuff of it. But no matter what size room, uh, what kind of room it is, it could benefit from sound treatment. And again, I'm just really happy with how this room has turned out and the sound panels had made all the difference. And not even just having them in the room, but having them hung to the right height because I had them all lined up against the wall first and I was like doing like a clap test or a snap test and there was still like a pretty noticeable echo in here. And I was bummed, I'm like, oh man, maybe this isn't gonna work out like I thought it would. And then I hung them up and it was gone and it sounds great. So definitely check that out. And don't be disturbed because it's super easy. I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. Yet another victim drawn into the bonkers realm of Mr. Daniels. With your charisma, you should set up a cult. I'm sure in no time, you could be pushed around in a banana yellow Rolls Royce by your devoted minions. Your videos are worryingly addictive. Excellent use of the word bonkers, which I think I'm gonna start bringing back. Uh, this isn't the first time someone has told me I could be a cult leader in a very complimentary tone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that as a compliment, even though I have slight reservations about it. This guy's a phony. <laughs> okay, like, like a phony what? A phony YouTuber? These aren't real YouTube videos <laughs> that you're watching? <laughs> Dad Gad is an abomination. I don't even know what kind of salty comment this is for because it's not really about me. It's more just like another salty dad gas comment. An abomination. A retuning of the guitar is an absolute abomination. This was delivered uh, on St. Patrick's Day too. So I hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day, everybody. More Emerald Riders content coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. Why do you leave out the fifth in a C major nine? So again, major nine chords, I think are fantastic underutilized guitar chords. And real quick, so like a C major nine, you have your middle finger, third fret of the A string, pointer finger grabbing the major third, second fret of the D string, your pinky, you have the fourth fret of the G string and your ring finger can grab the third fret of the B string. You just play those four notes in the middle. It's really just kind of like a very pretty chord. Now we have a root note, it's major third, it's major seventh, and then it's ninth, right? And the way the chord building works is they're, they're stacked in triads. So we have like a one, a three, a five, a seven, and a nine. Now this question is, where's that, where that five at? We're leaving a G out of this chord. Now the reason we can do that on a guitar is because a lot of these bigger extended chords like 9 chords, 11 chords and stuff like that, we don't have enough strings on a guitar to play them like a, like a piano player has 10 fingers. They can really just get down a lot easier. So you have to sacrifice for the sake of efficiency and usually the fifth is the first thing to go because the fifth is almost implied 
in all of uh, guitar playing. So if you ever hear the word like this note is implied, a lot of times it's meaning the fifth of a chord because they have such a synonymous kind of sound and feel. Like if you're playing a C major chord, it's like, all right, well, we don't need to play the fifth. If all the other notes might be more important for what we're trying to do as far as chord building. So the fifth is the one that gets left out a lot, but it can be confusing if you're just coming at it from like a, like a pure music theory point, like, all right, C major nine has a one, a three, a five, a seven, and a nine. And then you're trying to build a chord and you're trying to figure it out. Just know that sometimes on a guitar for the bigger extended chords, the fifth is implied. For listening homework this week, I'm going to link you to a project that I'm actually really excited about. It is Danger Mouse, one of my favorite producers, great kind of signature, iconic producer, really, and Karen O, oh, the former singer of the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, which is a band I was super excited about when they first came out. Loved that first Yeah Yeah Yeahs album. I'm like, this is gonna be like the next great rock band did not actually pan out that way in any way, shape, or form. But I think Karen O is an awesome singer who has two totally incredible sides. It's very kind of like a soft, beautiful, sweet singing side. And then this awesome, just absolute, just killer rock vocal style when she wants to. And I really think this collaboration turned out great between the two of them. So I'm gonna link you to a track there. I, I definitely suggest listening to the whole album if you ever get a chance to. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks a lot.